Okay, so what I want to do in this video is uh, prove and state Lucen's theorem, which is what we would have done on Friday. Um, so what's Lucen's theorem? Um, so let's say F is measurable, defined on the measurable subset of the real line. Then for any epsilon, there exists a continuous G on the real line and a um, big F contained in little f closed, both depending, of course, on epsilon, where um, f equals g on big F, and uh, the measure of e take away f is less than epsilon. So in some informal sense, um, uh, all measurable functions are almost continuous in this uh, very quantitative sense. OK. So how do we prove it? Well, the main part of the proof is to find a closed f where f is continuous on big F and the measure of e take away f is less than epsilon. Basically, if we do that, we're done because, um, uh, let me make this a little smaller. So yeah, if we do this, then we can just use the Tietz's theorem that we proved um, uh, you know, in the last video. Uh, particularly, we can uh, extend little f on this closed um, set f to a continuous uh, function on all of the real line, and we call it g in, in Tietz's theorem. Um, and that's because little f is, well, we're gonna prove that it's continuous on f. We're going to find a big F closed where little f is continuous on big F, and this is true. Okay, so yeah, let g be any uh, continuous extension of uh, little f to all of the real line. Okay, so proving uh, the existence of um, this big F is not hard, but it's going to take some work. And it's going to combine a lot of what we've done so far in this course. And we're gonna break it up into different cases. Um, the first case, the easiest case, is where f is simple. Okay. So yeah, let's write f, uh, let's write uh, the canonical representation of f. So let's say the image of f under e is a1 through an, these are distinct real numbers, and define ek to be, um, well, the set where f of x is equal to ak. So it's the inverse image of uh, the singleton ak. Okay. So that means E is the disjoint union of these eks. Um, it's the union of the eks, just like what we did uh, before, because, um, well, the image of f under E is a1 through an. And these are distinct, so this is clearly disjoint. <clears throat> All right. And uh, we proved that f of x is going to be this sum. Uh, this was like two weeks ago. Um, so, right. OK, so, um, so because f is simple, it's measurable, so uh, the inverse image of Singletons is measurable. So uh, we can pick close fk, where the measure of ek take away fk is less than epsilon over. There's no need to do any summing over k to get epsilon. So um, irregardless of k, uh, we just pick epsilon over n here. and That's going to get the job done. So let's say big F is uh, this union here. Um, and it's actually a disjoint union, so I should have put a uh, square u here, but rectangular u, but anyway. Okay, and because um, fk is a subset of ek, and the eks are pairwise disjoint, it's easy to prove that e take away f is going to be this union here. Uh, it's just 299. Um, you know, 299 prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side and vice versa. 
leave that uh, for my work. Okay. So clearly this is measurable. Uh, FK is measurable, it's a closed set. Um, and because this is a disjoint union, uh, the measure is uh, the measure of the, you know, the, the sum of each of these, or the sum of the measure of each of these, rather. <clears throat> uh, so each of these is less than epsilon over n, so it sums up to epsilon. And last but not least, it's an easy homework to prove that little f is continuous on um, big F. Okay. And it's really just by um, you know, how we defined big F right? and the fact that F is a simple function. Right? Yeah, I'll give some hints on how to do this. It's, it's very easy. Um, but, I mean, it's not trivial. But it's, okay. Anyway. So the next case is uh, f is basically an arbitrary measurable function on um, a finite measurable a set of uh, uh, sorry on a uh, measurable set of finite measures. Okay, so we're going to assume f is arbitrary measurable function, but that E has finite measure. And the main reason we're going to do this is uh, to invoke um, Egorov's theorem. Uh, you have to have a uh, finite measure to invoke Egorov's theorem. Uh, in fact, we proved that um, if you define fn of x to be x over n on the whole real line, then um, this sequence of functions on the real line violates the conclusion of Egorov's theorem. So Egorov's theorem is not true unless you have, not necessarily true unless you have a finite measure. Okay, so, um, right, well, regardless of, you know, E being, has it having finite measure or not, we can pick simple functions F on E that converge pointwise to F on E. And uh, we can still pick closed Fn, regardless of whether E has finite measure or not, where, um, well, because Fn is a simple function, um, Fn is going to be continuous on big Fn from what we've proven before, and m uh, take away, uh, the measure of E take away Fn is less than epsilon over 2 to the n plus 1. So all I'm doing is invoking case 1 here. By case 1, I can pick a uh, big Fn subset of E closed where this is true. And I will sum up over... Um, n to get epsilon, so that's why we need epsilon over 2 to the n plus 1. <clears throat> okay. okay, now let's invoke Egorov's theorem. Pick f0 subset of E closed, where fn converges to f uniformly on f0, and this measure here is less than epsilon over 2. All right. So define big F to be the intersection of all these sets here. <clears throat> okay. all right. Basically, I want a set where everything here is true. So take the intersection of all these sets. All right, so standard stuff that we've done before, standard 299 stuff. E take away this intersection is um, the union of E take away each Fn. Uh, countable subadditivity means that this is less than or equal to the sum. Each of these, well, for n equals 0, E take away F0 has a uh, measure less than epsilon over 2. When n equals 1, E take away Fn has measure less than epsilon over 2 to the n plus 1. So this all adds up to epsilon. <coughs> Um, so yeah, the measure of E take away F is less than epsilon. And, well, Fn is continuous on F. Each Fn is continuous on F because each F is a subset of Fn. And each little Fn is continuous on each big Fn. Okay. I mean, big F is the intersection of all these Fn's. So clearly, 
um, the intersection is a subset of each individual fen. Big F. And also we have Fn converges to F uniformly on big F um, because big F is a subset of big F zero. Okay. And again, big Fn is the intersection of all these, including big F zero. So the intersection is um, now a subset of the individual set F big F zero. Okay. So we have a continuous function on Fn. Fn converges to F uniformly on, sorry, we have a continuous function on big F. Um, Fn is a continuous function on big F. Fn converges to little f uniformly on big F. So by 511, uniform convergence on a set means a function is continuous on that set. <clears throat> so that takes care of uh, this case. Again, remembering that the measure of E take away F is less than epsilon. Okay, so finally we do the case where F is an arbitrary measurable function on a measurable um, set E where it could have infinite measure. So, well, we have to invoke somehow the case where we have finite measure. <clears throat> so the easiest thing to do, as we've done before, is just chop up uh, E into um, you know, each of these sets where, well, the measure of En is obviously at most um, one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is that the measure of each En is finite. So invoking case two, pick closed Fn, the subset of En, where um, the measure of En take away Fn is epsilon over two, absolute value of n plus one. We're gonna sum over all integers n, so um, that's why we have this here, and we wanna get epsilon back. And uh, little f is continuous on big Fn. Again, we are allowed to do this because each En has finite measure. <clears throat> okay, so let big F be this union here. It's a uh, fairly easy homework to prove that big F is closed. In general, of course, the union of, uh, you know, the countable union of closed sets is not necessarily closed. Um, yeah, by definition, it's an F sigma set. That's the definition of an F sigma set, but um, <clears throat> you know, these are kind of special. Um, each of these are, are uh, disjoint um, and it's finite. Each of the ENs are disjoint and finite, and the big FNs are a subset of the big ENs. So using that fact, it's easy to prove that F is closed. So we argue as before to uh, you know, estimate the measure of E take away F because um, again, the ENs are pairwise disjoint and the big FNs are a subset of the, the ENs. E take away F is gonna be the disjoint union of EN take away FN. Again, left-hand side, the subset of the right-hand side, and vice versa. So the measures are obviously equal. This is a disjoint union, everything's measurable. So it equals the uh, sum. Each one of these is less than epsilon over two to the absolute value of n plus two, and this adds up to epsilon. So we know the measure of E take away big F is less than epsilon. And last but not least, homework is that little f is continuous on big F. Um, again, this is not very hard. I'll still, it's not trivial, but I'll, I'll give some hints on how to do that. All right, and that takes care of uh, the proof of Lucent's theorem. Right, we found a closed F where the measure of E take away F is less than epsilon, and where little f is continuous on big F. 
Um, yeah. All right. um, hopefully this was clear. Let me know if there's any questions. Um, and um, yeah, uh, enjoy the break. Um, stay safe and virus free. And I will post more videos um, probably, um, you know, after the break.